Finally, guys, I have actually some time to work on this thing now. I've been pushing all the fixes on this thing and putting them on a back burner, mostly because I've been constantly using this thing and I really haven't had any time to do any fixes to it. So in this video, I'm going to try to get a couple of things fixed at least. And probably the most important thing that I need to get fixed right now are the pins on the arms. So don't be shocked what you're about to see. I know it's pretty bad and this really needs some attention. So the pins themselves have a little bit of play in them, as you can see. I mean, I'm no expert, but I think this is pretty bad. And it's also pretty much the same on the other side. So this thing really needs to be fixed because I'm pretty sure it's gonna fall off soon. And if one side breaks and the other side will hold, I'm pretty sure it's gonna like break the entire frame in half or something like that. So I don't really want that to happen. That would be slightly annoying. So when I got this machine, somebody had welded this pin on the frame, but the weld was broken and the pin was out about this far. And it had about the same amount of play in it than it has now. So what I did, I just hammered the pin back in, re-welded this thing and it had very minimal play. So something happened there. I'm thinking something broke. I'm not really 100% sure right now. We'll see once we get it out of there. And on the other side, I really haven't done anything, but at least this side is not welded. So maybe it's a bit easier to get it out. Another thing that I want to get fixed on this thing is this backlight here. Currently it has no power. I've hooked this light up to the main lights, but the main lights don't even have a switch there. So this is supposed to be the main light switch here. But the switch has evacuated its home for some reason. So I can't get power to the main lights right now. And I don't think I'm gonna even trust the original uh, wiring here. Because, check this out, this is my fuse box right here. My fuse box is secured to a... Uh, what is this? Oh, this is a coolant line, I think. My fuse box is secured to a coolant line with a cable die. So, yeah. I'm kind of amazed this thing has not burned down yet. And also, this is my relay box here. Not even sure what this wire does. I hate wiring. And so I'm pretty sure I can't get power going to the main lights here. And most likely I will just get a new wire going to this work light. Also, by the way, to make sure that this thing does not burn down the house while I'm away, I always disconnect the negative terminal on the battery when I park this machine. So I think that's probably the safest thing to do. Another thing that I want to get kind of fixed is this traction lock override button. You probably saw in the start of this video that I had some trouble engaging this because I need to move these uh, wire harnesses around uh, to get it working and I think there is a loose wire somewhere so I need to check this out because if this button doesn't work I can't get the hydraulics to work so let's try to get this fixed and hopefully everything will turn out nicely oh and uh, one more thing I probably need to do something about the cylinder also you can see it has these two dents in the rod and uh, that over time that ruins the seals. So it's been leaking out ever since I got the machine. It doesn't come out a lot, just a little bit. So I'm probably not gonna do anything to it until it really starts flowing, you know? I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do here with these dents. Maybe somebody in the comments section can help me out with that. Because I'm pretty sure if I take this thing to the hydraulic shop, they're either gonna say that the fixing this cylinder will be like half a grand or I should just get a new cylinder because changing out the seals is pointless if it has these two dents in the rod. So if you have any good ideas about what I should do about the cylinders, just let me know in the comments. But let's try to get these uh, pins fixed now uh, and uh, hopefully everything will turn out great.
so apparently I need to hammer this pin in because it won't come out this way, it can only can go inside And I can't get this pin even out. I'm pretty sure it's the pin should go inside and then this side just should just fall down. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna try this side instead. Well, something definitely has broken here. There's, there's nothing here. I'm not really sure what the hell is going on there. I just want to get it out. <sighs> okay, I figured out what's going on here. Why this thing doesn't want to go any deeper. So the bolt that was here before this has been broken off and about this much of that bolt is deep inside that pivot pin. So that's why it's not going any further sadly. And I can't get the pin out that way uh, because there's a broken bolt inside there and the pin won't come out this way because it's not designed to come out this way. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna remove this now and maybe I can just pull the entire thing off. So let's try that. Okay. Yeah, you can see the broken off bolt in there. So I was a bit puzzled why this didn't, this didn't come out. So let's check how badly worn this pin is. It looks pretty bad, but not the worst. I think there are a lot more worse pivot pins out there. Also, there's a crack here, so this pin will probably break apart very soon anyway. Yeah, this is where it broke.
This looks like a pile of mess right here. Oh, at least it's coming out. I was afraid that it's not gonna come out at all. At least I did a good job greasing this thing, right? When I got the machine, this thing had zero grease in it. I don't really understand how people use machinery without any proper lubrication. Holy crap. Check this out. It's rounded nicely inside, but here it's oval. Also, let's check the pin out, how far this has gone. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. This has some crazy uneven wear. If we take the other one for comparison, you can see that this one wore out pretty much on the same level, but this one only on the top. They look different also, but I'm pretty sure they're not. And looks like this is the threaded rod that comes out of this. Uh, and it's like been welded to here or something like that. Not really sure what's going on there. Also, this nut has been broken off. But I'm a bit afraid here how I'm gonna fix this. Because I don't, I'm not sure if this will come out. On the other side, you can see that this comes out nicely. And then I can just replace this part. So I need to replace this out and get a new pin here. This is fine, actually, because this is oval shaped. This does not, uh, the pin ex the pin itself does not move here. It's not supposed to move here, I think. But on this side, I have a lot more problems. First of all, I need to figure out if I can pull it out the same way than, than the other side. Plus, on this side, check this out. This is completely gone. It's, it's just messed up completely. It's like a oval shaped egg kind of going on here. So this is pretty bad right now. I'm not really 100% sure how I'm gonna fix this up. Oh boy. Okay, so I need to order some pivot pins and the pushings for this. So while I wait for them to arrive, let's try to get the lights fixed. So this should be a pretty simple job. Currently I have my lights wired up to this button over here. So I have my front lights here. Okay guys, so I think uh, I changed my mind about this a bit. Instead of mounting this thing here, I was thinking I'm gonna mount one here and I'm gonna buy another one for the other side. I think it will be a lot easier for me to do the wiring from here to here, then do the wiring from here down through the system because this is a tiltable gap and then to the engine bay and finally here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that, that's a lot easier. Bye! I have plenty of more washers, don't worry. This is the worst wire cutter in the universe. I mean, it ain't pretty, but I think it will get the job done.
I get my power from this line here and I couldn't really find a breaker for it. Even if I took all the breakers out, this line still had power and it still has power even without the ignition switch. So because I'm using that line for my lights, I added a breaker here just in case. And, and this is a 5 amp breaker, so that's fine for 4 LED lights, I think. So I think that's good enough. Let's check out how these lights work. Yeah, that's a lot better. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. I can even see behind me, which is a bonus. Okay, so that's fixed. So guys, a little bit of an update on the loader arm itself. So apparently there is a repair kit with a bunch of uh, bushings and pins that is designed for this uh, loader here. And how that works is basically you just machine this hole out and then install your new bushing and weld that thing in there. The same goes for the mounting plate. I would need to either cut this bushing out of here or maybe drill it out of here or, or something like that and then just install a new bushing and weld that thing in there. Yeah, I was really happy that I found all those parts, but I became unhappy pretty fast because of the cost of those parts. So the bushings that go inside the arms here are about $90 each. So let's round that up to about 200 bucks. The bushings that go inside the mounting plate here are around 120 bucks each so so far for four bushings i'm paying 400 dollars which seems ridiculous by the way these parts are made by bobcat so i'm guessing that's why they're so expensive plus i would need the pivot pins so that's another 100 bucks and also the kit has some cup seals and rubber seals and a bunch of other smaller things so the total cost would be about 600 something dollars plus you add tax and transport fees so the total price would be about 700 800 bucks just for the parts add to the fact that i'm probably unable to even pour this hole out or cut this old bushing out of here and i would probably need to take this thing to, into a machine shop where they do this so I'm probably looking around 1500 bucks repairing this thing. No, thank you. I'm going to try to get this thing done cheaper. I'm not sure it's going to work, but I have a plan. Because this pivot pin here was riding on the outside surface, as you can see, the inside of the bushing there is perfectly fine. And for some miraculous reason, this side has no wear on it. I have no idea how. I'm guessing the pivot pin itself is made out of softer steel than the bushing here, so that's why the bushing has not worn out. So I went to the local hardware store and got a bunch of cheap parts. I got four of these bushings that go with this pin. So I was thinking maybe I'm gonna just weld this smaller bushing in here. It fits pretty nicely and I can just leave it out slightly and then just weld it shut from this worn out area. For the loader arm itself, I would need to drill this hole out to about 32 millimeters. And then I can install this bushing inside the loader arm. I can weld it around pretty nicely. So I think it will be pretty solid inside there. Also on this side. I'm kind of amazed how well this thing goes in here. And then I take my pin here, install it in the arm, 
with these two bushings. Now this bushing will be inside the arm and this one will be inside the mounting plate. It will still have a bit of play but I think it will be a lot better than it was before. Plus I think this solution will work out pretty nicely. So before I go and dump a bunch of money on this thing, let's try to get this fixed with just 20 bucks. So I'm just going to add a little bit of weld here. If I need to realign this thing, I can just cut that off. Apparently brake fluid is flammable. Yeah, that's that's about what I need right now. Cool, I have my own personal smoke machine. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think this is solid enough. And also a nice tight fit here. So I don't think I'm gonna actually weld this side. First of all, I had to hammer it in very hard to get it to where it is right now and I'm pretty sure it has no room in there for the bushings to go any deeper maybe it's just maybe it's just a little bit but not that much I noticed that there's a crack here so I might just weld the outer race shot and leave the inner bushing unwelded I think that's a smarter choice but before I actually install it back on the machine to test it out I want to fix one more thing, uh, there, there should be a grease nipple here that greases this rod. Now this rod is kind of hard moving. This one moves just fine, but 
this one doesn't want to move that much. I'm gonna go with the oversize. I mean, this is probably a bit too much torque, but maybe I can just do it. Yeah, I think that's fine. Oh yeah, that's fixed. So apparently it's not going to fit right now, so I need to cut this edge off a bit, this edge off a bit, and also this edge. I'm hoping I don't need to cut this edge. So I ended up just cutting this thing off and re-welded the bushing in there. I should have actually measured this before I welded in. It was about 7 millimeters too far and it just wouldn't fit. I don't know guys, so far so good, but okay, I'm gonna weld the bushings for the arms now. I think they are in the right position anyway, but at least the pins went, it went in. If the pin, pins didn't go in at all, then the bushings are not on the correct position.
overall I'm pretty happy how this thing turned out right now. The thing is tight as hell. I didn't really want it to be that tight. So next thing that I got to do is actually make sure that these pins, that they cannot come out. So I have to prevent that. So I got the idea for that. Uh, so let's do that now. Seven times ten, maybe. Dirt gets in between the magnets and it doesn't stick that well anymore. I have to clean them up constantly, it's kind of annoying. Look at that, that's just beautiful. So I think that's strong enough for keeping the pin from coming out, you know. Well, that looks like a pile of mess. But for me, it's a strong pile of mess. I don't know guys, I just pumped an uh, entire tube of grease into the, this port. I don't see any grease coming out from anywhere. It can't go, I don't know, I don't really understand what's going on here, because this is a closed off section, it can't go that way. It's just this small portion here. 
So let's let's check out the other side. Yeah, this was only like maybe 25 seconds of pumping and I got grease flowing here nicely. Oh well, I guess I will just keep pumping. I don't know guys, after 6 years of pumping grease and 76 million dupes of grease, it finally started coming out of here. I'm not really sure what's going on here. I think grease was escaping into this box here somehow. Very little play, mostly in the center cylinder here. I think it's a bit better than it was before. So I think I succeeded here rebuilding this thing. And yeah, instead of 800 bucks, I spent like uh, maybe 26. So I'm not really 100% sure how well this uh, design will hold up. I'm not even sure anybody else has really done a design like this before. But I guess time will tell and if this thing does break, I will do a follow-up video on it, but I don't think this will break. Let me know in the comments what you think about this design and if this is a success or not. So the next thing that I want to check is the oil in the chain case over there. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I haven't checked that before. So hopefully there's oil in there. But guess what kind of socket goes in here? A ratchet strap. So considering this uh, traction lock override button, I don't know what I did, but it's working all the time now. I did take this cover off and I fiddled around with the wires. I'm guessing there is a bad connection somewhere in the box. So I'm not going to touch it anymore. Hopefully it will keep working, but uh, if it stops working again, then uh, I'm pretty sure there is a bad connection inside here somewhere. So, so guys, one more thing that I want to do to this thing before I put it back into service. Hopefully you have sticked around so far, if so, thanks a lot. I'm hoping this video is not that long. So I've noticed that this drive belt, uh, this is a hydraulic drive belt. So it should drive the hydraulic pump back there somewhere. Uh, I've noticed that this belt is kind of whining on me uh, when I put it, uh, when I put some heavy loads on the hydraulic systems. So. You can see that this belt has quite a bit of slack in it. So maybe we can just kind of tighten it up or we need a new belt. So I'm not really sure. The belt kind of looks okay. I mean, it's not cracked or anything like that. So let's just try to, let's just try to add some tension to this belt. I think that will fix the issue. First things first, got to remove the battery. <laughs> So I'm guessing that's the problem here. I mean, personally, I think this pool is fine. But just in case, I'm gonna order a new one, but I'm gonna put this back right now. I think the belt is fine. I didn't see any cracks or anything like that. But just in case, I'm gonna order a new belt as well. Managed to push the pulley a bit more down and... For example, it's very hard for me to turn the pulley now by hand. Before I was able to just swing that around, no problem.
now comes my favorite part, the cleanup. And it's just easy as that. Yeah, that's also fixed. Very nice. Okay, for now this is fixed and it got it much needed repairs done. So this is probably the first major kind of work I've done in this machine. When I first got this thing, I just mostly painted it and changed out the oils and filters. Oh, and I also was crying about the drive motor not working, but glad that's still working nicely. So this thing is probably the primary topic of this video. I'm really hoping this will last nicely. So as I said before, uh, the original parts and kits that the Bobcap dealership offered me was around, I believe, 600 to 800 bucks. And I managed to get this fixed with just $20, roughly. And I think overall this setup will work fine, but definitely let me know in the comments what you think about this design that I chose here. I'm not sure if there will be any problems with this design choice. Overall, I think this will be fine. I think it's strong enough. Plus, addition to this repair, I got a bunch of other things done as well. So you probably saw me spinning around uh, out there. Well, after I tightened this belt here, this thing has a lot of more power. Before, when I fully engaged at the drive, it kind of slowed down, I noticed power loss and yeah, but after I tensioned that belt, no slowdown at all. So, and for now this tensioning did the trick, but I will order the new belt and the new tensioners just in case, because I think they are pretty much at the end of their lifespan right now. Oh, and I also repainted the rims. I think they look a lot nicer now. But anyway, I think I'm going to conclude this episode. Uh, got major fixes done on this machine and I think it will serve me very well now. I think this will serve me for years and years. So next up is this thing. Yeah, I need to get the entire undergarage fixed. I need to order a lot of parts for this undergarage here. But anyway, thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.